Outdoor Travel Channel with Robin Sherry. Hey folks, this is Rob from Outdoor Travel Channel and today we're cooking again, but it's not a Traeger day. Today is a dry fruit day. <laughs> and so I finally pulled out my dryer and I bought this from Capella's. And I like it because it um, goes out uh, goes up to 120, 140 degrees. And one of our favorite things to do is to make dried pears. And so uh, anyway, this thing is awesome. And so <laughs> have I got some pears. So I've got four types of pears I'm gonna do. And if I don't fill up all the trays, I'm gonna do bananas too. Now, in order to do this, you need to, uh, uh, when you start drying, food they'll tend to brown so one of the things or tricks that you can do there's a preservative you can get or you can use uh, lemon juice so you dunk every piece of fruit in lemon juice and it'll help keep it from browning anyway and it gives it really good flavor so bear with me we're going to cut up some pears and we're going to load this thing up and let her rip it'll take all I don't know, a couple of hours, I mean, half a day, maybe 24 hours, I'm not sure. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, I can, tr trust me, it's good stuff. Now, I'll, I don't like to dry mine out really super dry. And the reason I don't buy it in the store is I use too much sugar. I, uh, I like the natural flavors. So uh, anyway, um, we will have to refrigerate ours because they'll still be a little bit moist but tastes so good that way and it's a great thing for lunches great for snacks and if you're trying to eat something healthy uh, this is a lot better than buying the dried fruit that you get at the store because they tend to use a lot of sugar for preservatives so anyway let's get going first thing I need to do is get all these stickers off which was a real pain So basically I just cut the ends off and then I uh, basically will take it and cut it in half and then in, in the quarters and then carefully cut everything into slices. Now uh, I'm sure there's better ways to do this but uh, I, and I'm not going to show all the pairs I'm just going to show this setting here but uh, let's just take a paring knife I get the centers out then I'll take my big knife and make little slices. Uh, that are manageable, uh, maybe no more than a quarter inch, uh, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, remember, I don't dry mine completely, so I kind of like them a little bit chewy. So yeah, here we go. So here's the first two pairs all cut up and now I'm getting ready to make my uh, lemon juice mixing and I am going to add some uh, sugar to this too. So I'm putting in about two teaspoons of sugar into this. Um, this is non-processed sugar so that's why it's brown. So I get it all stirred up and uh, get ready to put my uh, pears in there. So I just pull my first drawer, put it on some uh, paper here, and then you'll see me starting to put the uh, pears in there, mix them up really good, and start laying them out. And I try not to let them touch each other. That allows the hot air to uh, blow between them really well without any interference. Once it's all filled up, I open my door and I grab my tray and put in my first one and repeat the process over and over. So to save on time, I'm not going to show all these different pears being cut up, but I did my red ones next and uh, all my other ones. And by the way, I had extra drawers left when I was done, so we're going to be doing bananas at the end too. Once again, I took these pears, put them in the lemon juice and sugar, and started putting them on the tray. And uh, I, I'm not going to go through all of them, but anyway, we'll get to the end of all this. Put 
This one is my third set of pairs and one more set to go. This was my last one and next comes the bananas. The bananas are a lot easier than doing the pears. I just cut the ends and then you'll see a little trick I do about uh, getting the skins off and then just chop them into little quarters. Here I'm just flipping them over and doing the other side too with a little cut. Time to peel these things. By the way, through all this process, I have been adding more lemon juice and more sugar as I go and well, basically as needed. So I just cut these things up into little quarters, throw them in the juice as I go because it's a little easier to manage that way. And then I load up the trays. Just finishing up the last tray here and uh, we'll be ready to turn on the machine. So I set it for 130 degrees and uh, then just turn on the switch and I'm ready to go. So about seven or eight hours later, it was kind of late in the evening, I actually pull uh, all the drawers and turn all the fruit over just to make sure that they're all drying evenly. All right, so it's been, uh, well, it was overnight. So it's been less, maybe it's been about 16 hours and everything came out really good. Uh, I, these came out pretty crispy, but still a little bit on the soft side the way I like them. And my bananas came out um, really good, but they're actually uh, more crispy than I like. I like to have them a little bit soft, but uh, they're still really good. So. Um, very happy with our dryer. This is from Cabela's and uh, if you get a chance to get one of these things you can do a lot of things with it. <laughs> so uh, all my different pears came out really yummy. I've tested all of them. <laughs> and uh, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed how to do this and if you get a chance to buy a dryer uh, you'll be happy. So they're uh, kind of pricey to get one that goes up to high temperature. Uh, the little round ones don't get warm enough. I worry about that if you're doing like meat. Anything else is pretty good. So, but this one goes up to uh, oh, 160 degrees, and that's a good thing. So anyway, there you go. Bye now. Hey, thanks for joining me drying pears and bananas. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. <laughs> take care, guys. Bye.